Hey guys, it's Ryan. Um, this video, we're going to be talking about hypertension and diabetes screening in the dental office. And these are two of the easiest and most important things to screen for in any medical setting. And unfortunately, they haven't been happening routinely in uh, the dental office. So hypertension, of course, is high blood pressure, and diabetes refers to a problem with insulin, which has downstream effects and problems with glucose. So why is this important? Well, the mouth is not separate from the rest of the body, and this is something that um, the medical and dental professions have been struggling with in that they've been treated very separately, when in fact one influences the other and vice versa. Dental visits provide the perfect opportunity for screening because people generally see their doctor every, every year and see their dentist twice a year, and so the ideal patient will be seeing their dentist twice as often. It also gives an opportunity to limit damage to the body. Um, hypertension and diabetes are both classically called uh, silent killers because you don't really experience symptoms until much later in the disease progression. And so persistent hypertension and hyperglycemia or high blood glucose can damage blood vessels, kidneys, the heart, brain, eyes, nerves, and other target organs. So detecting these conditions in early stages can control the disease before more dangerous symptoms take place. Let's be honest, dental appointments are stressful and acute stress can trigger serious reactions, heart attack, stroke, um, and all these things can be caused by both hypertension and um, uncontrolled diabetes. And it also influences dental management. We would have to limit epinephrine use in severe cases and employ a stress reduction protocol um, and that sort of thing. So outside of the dental chair, screening and referring can save a patient's life. So we'll start with hypertension. Um, I'm, I have a bunch of measurements here. They're based on the most recent, the 8th uh, Joint National Committee, or JNC, and hypertension is measured with a sphygmo manometer and measured in millimeters of mercury. All right, so I don't do well remembering a bunch of random numbers, so I like to draw things out so they're easier to reproduce. Um, so first, we're gonna draw a straight line and then four tick marks. And on top, um, we label SBP, which stands for systolic blood pressure, and DBP, which is diastolic blood pressure. And just to review, systolic refers to pressure against the arterial walls as the heart contracts, and diastolic is when the heart relaxes and ventricles fill with blood returning from the rest of the body. So we'll start labeling this with 120 over 80, which is kind of the classic um, easy one to remember. And then for each of the top, uh, for the top row, add 20 to each number. So you go 120, then 140, 160, then 180. For the bottom row, add 10 to each number. So you'll start with 80, then go 90, 100, and 110. Okay, once we have that, then we can fill in um, the middle of the, of the timeline here. So green um, we can color up to, but leave a little space, um, and you'll see why that's important later. And then from 120 up to here, we'll color in like an orange, and then color in another band of orange, another band of orange, and then red. Okay, so now once we have this, we can label each segment of this timeline. So we have normal is everything up to, but not including 120 over 80. That's why we have these little spaces. Um, Pre-hypertension is everything from 120 over 80 up to, but not including 140 over 90, and et cetera, et cetera. So we have stage one, stage two, and uncontrolled hypertension. So stage one, um, basically, I like to think of it as a um, a stage of the disease where typically it's treated with one medication, where stage two is typically treated with two or more medications, so that's a nice easy way to remember that. Um, and white coat hypertension, which is persistent blood pressure only at like a doctor's office, will typically fall somewhere in this stage one range. Uncontrolled is 
um, a case where that person is hypertensive, has hypertensive crisis, would need urgent treatment, some kind of medication, or even a hospitalization is in order. So um, do not treat a patient, a dental patient with this um, high blood pressure and refer them to a physician. Um, ideally, we'd wanna take a couple of measurements so we make sure we don't have any outliers. Um, so take a couple measurements and then average them together. Okay, so now diabetes. Um, these measurements are based on the American Diabetes Association, um, typically taken with a finger prick and a glucometer, and then measured in milligrams per deciliter of blood. So for this one, I'll have the same setup, so it makes it nice and easy to remember. Uh, horizontal line with four tick marks, but this time we're going to have two different um, test categories. So FPG stands for fasting plasma glucose. And so this is um, for a fasting that would be defined as um, not having anything to eat or drink except water for at least eight hours before the test. And then OGTT stands for oral glucose tolerance test. And so this would be when you have a 75 milligram tablet of glucose dissolved in water um, the patient would drink this sweet drink, and um, you check the blood glucose after two hours. So you basically reveal how your body processes the glucose. Um, you could also, um, it also refers to like a two-hour postprandial test, which would be um, basically within two hours of eating, uh, having a meal. So postprandial just means after a meal. Okay, so... Basically, these, these measurements are important for both type 1 and type 2 diabetes. I just wanted to make that point. And so for these numbers, we're just going to label um, the top line because they uh, refer to both tests. And the numbers to remember are 100, 126, 140, and 200. And we're going to color in the timeline for the upper and label them like that and color the lower row and label them like this. So you can tell that the threshold's much lower for fasting, which makes sense because you haven't had as recent of a glucose um, exposure, I guess you could say. And orange, uh, I want to tell you what these stand for. They're typically used by like in a doctoral setting, a doctoral setting, and they were both refer to um, pre-diabetes. So Whereas in the previous slide, the orange was pre-hypertension, the orange here is pre-diabetes, which basically tells you you're at higher sugar than normal, but not quite diabetes. You're at risk for developing type 2, essentially. Um, IFG stands for impaired fasting glucose, and IGT stands for impaired glucose tolerance. And they're kind of it's kind of a pain to remember, but it's also not too bad because this one has fasting in the word, which makes sense because it has to do with the fasting test, and this one has tolerance in the word, and it has to do with the tolerance test. So that's nice. They're, they both refer to prediabetes, but just different names depending on what test was used. And um, if you're wondering, HbA1c is sort of outside the scope of this video. That's something that we can't really routinely check in a dental office. Um, so an important point before we start doing some cases, we cannot diagnose these conditions as dentists. But if we get a reading like 180 over 110 or 200 postprandial, then we're responsible for referring those patients to a physician for the actual diagnosis and treatment of that condition. All right, so on this slide, I reproduced both of those timelines for hypertension and for diabetes, so we can refer back to them when we have a, a patient case. So let's say a patient sits in your dental chair and their blood pressure is 162 over 108. So we can't diagnose, but if we were to, what category would that patient fall under? So 162 over 108 
would fall right about here on the timeline, and so we would classify them stage 2 hypertension if we were a physician. What if their blood pressure was 136 over 98? So now for this one, it's a little interesting because the 136 would fall in prehypertension, whereas the 98 would fall in stage 1. So basically, whichever one is higher will determine the category. So in this case, they would be stage 1 because the, nine, the diastolic was 98. What if their blood pressure was right at 120 over 80? Well, actually, they would technically be prehypertensive because that is included in this category. You'd have to be less than 120 over 80 to be classified as normal. Okay, so now if we have a patient in the dental chair, you know they're diabetic, so you do a finger prick, and you get a reading of 150. And they said they ate about an hour before coming. So that would tell you that you'd have to use the bottom row here. It's postprandial. And um, if it's 150, they would fall in the prediabetes category IGT. And what about if you, they don't know when they ate last? If it was sort of um, just a memory issue or they just, they just didn't remember when they ate or um, that sort of thing. Well, there's a third category called random sampling. And so that would use the same parameters as this OGTT. So you essentially assume that they ate something or when you use the, th the higher threshold in case. And for the last example, what if their blood glucose is 133 and it's an AM appointment and they just woke up? So in this case, um, if they just woke up and they're sleeping, that would be considered um, fasting, assuming it's at least eight hours. So we'd use the top row here and 133 would put them at the uncontrolled category. So although, again, we can't diagnose as dentists, but we would not treat an uncontrolled patient, and we would re refer them to a physician for evaluation and treatment. All right, guys, well, that's it for this video. I hope you found it helpful. Please leave a like and comment on what you'd like to see next. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.